Hi there, my name's David Reese, and I have an artisanal pencil sharpening business, and I've sharpened more than 1,500 pencils for paying customers. A lot of people think they know how to sharpen pencils, but they don't really. And one of the points of my business is to remind people how to properly sharpen a pencil. If you want to start a pencil sharpening practice in your own home, you're going to need a fair amount of equipment. Now, you can buy everything you need for less than $1,000. I should know. I've done it. And the great thing about having a pencil sharpening business is that unlike a lot of woodworking crafts, you can carry around everything that you need in a single toolkit. This is my toolkit. These are pencils, number two pencils, the only type of pencil that I sharpen and the type of pencil that we'll be sharpening today. Pencils are probably the most important component in a pencil sharpening business. You can sharpen a pencil without a pencil sharpener, but you can't sharpen a pencil without a pencil. I also have uh, a rag for wiping away residue and cleaning a pencil point. I use uh, an old Wu-Tang Clan t-shirt, but that's not necessary. You can use any old white rag, as long as it's made out of cotton and is an old wrap group t-shirt. These are the shatterproof plastic display tubes that I use for shipping pencils through the mail to satisfied customers around the world. Here are the labels that I affix to the shavings bag and the plastic display tubes into which I put the pencils. This label will contain the information job number, date, lighting condition, sharpener used, pencil number two, yes or no, always yes, sharpness rating and sharpener operator initials. This is one of my favorite sharpeners. It's a replica of an old American sharpener from 1905. The way it works is pretty obvious. This is how someone in an office might have sharpened a pencil more than 100 years ago. This is an unopened pencil sharpener from an Asian country, Japan. And finally, this is the blade that I'm going to use to sharpen a pencil. Here are some pencils. These are number two pencils. It's our responsibility to choose a pencil that's worth sharpening. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the graphite core of the pencil, what you might know as the pencil's lead, even though it doesn't have lead in it and never has had lead in it, still you can be forgiven for that misnomer, is it centered within the barrel or the shaft of the pencil. If it's off center, it's going to be harder to make a consistent conical point. You also should make sure that the shaft of the pencil is straight, that there's minimal bowing to the shaft of the pencil. Why not work with a pencil shaft that's straight rather than one that's bowed? So this is the pencil that I'll sharpen. You should take a couple hours to look through your own home and find a pencil that's suitable for you to sharpen. Now, you're going to be holding the pencil in your non-dominant hand and holding the knife in your dominant hand. Once you have both items in hand, simply return the pencil to the tabletop because we have to sharpen our knife. As anyone knows, whether you're a woodworker or a chef or a bandit in an alley, the most important tool in your toolkit is a properly sharpened knife. And to that end, we have here a leather strop that I'm going to use to sharpen my knife. You should have one of these in your basement or in your grandfather's uh, tomb. You'll be able to find a leather strop. And we're simply going to take just a few moments to rub our knife blade back and forth on this leather strop so that it's nice and sharp. Once your knife is sharpened, return the strop to its resting place before anyone knows it's been missing. And now, pick up your knife, pick up your pencil, and get ready to journey backwards through time at a terrific velocity as I teach you how to point a pencil. There are a super abundance of pencil sharpening technologies available to us these days, but it makes sense for us to pick up these tools and maintain the consistency of this old-timey practice. It connects us to our forebears, our ancestors, and it also teaches us that there's nothing to be afraid of and there's nothing to be ashamed of when it comes to sharpening a pencil with a straight blade. You can spend all day admiring the platonic ideal of a pencil in your mind, but at some point you need to actually sharpen the goddamn thing and put it to the page and write your grocery list. Pencil in non-dominant hand, knife in dominant hand. Now we're going to be working in several discrete stages here. The first step is going to be to simply expose the graphite that's lying in wait within the wood of the pencil shaft. Once we've exposed the graphite, 
we can shape the graphite and produce an iconic or less than iconic or horribly ugly pencil point, okay? So our first step is to place the blade of the knife against one of the edges or ridges of the hexagonal shaft of the pencil and then if you can see this, propel the knife towards the unsharpened end of the pencil by the thumb of your non-dominant hand which is holding and rotating the pencil. Err on the side of too long a pencil point, that is to say maybe a, maybe the, a thumb knuckles length away from the unsharpened raw end of the pencil. And as we rotate the pencil shaft, we're going to notice that with each successive swipe of the blade, the ring of safety, okay, the wooden ring of comfort, that aperture is closing in on the graphite core. And you can see now that sure enough, I am exposing the graphite that was hidden inside the shaft of the pencil. I am moving with such a delicate hand that I have exposed the graphite while producing minimal divots and almost no scratches. So I have a nice unblemished graphite cylinder to work with in conjuring my finished pencil point. Take a moment now to rotate the shaft of your pencil between your two hands just to visually confirm that you have an unobstructed view of the graphite core and there's nothing that will get in the way of you now shaping this graphite core into a handsome pencil point. Great! We've completed the first stage of the pencil pointing process. So we reach now for our sanding block or our high grit sandpaper, any fine abrasive surface that we want to make the iconic pencil point shape with our uh, graphite. So you take your pencil in your dominant hand and just begin rubbing it against your abrasive surface and rotating it as you rub. As I said, this is delightfully messy and wasteful and I have been criticized by friends of mine, contractors, luthiers, woodworkers, who think that this is too wasteful. And to them, I say, fuck off and die. Okay, and every so often you should take your rag and clean it off and check in with your pencil point and see what you're dealing with. So here again, if you were to pick up this pencil on a crowded desktop, you would say two things. You would say, oh, how delightful, a properly sharpened pencil just when I need it most. And then you would say, as you rotated the pencil and admired a certain hard scrabble authenticity in its shaping, you would say, well, here's one pencil that definitely wasn't shaped by an electric pencil sharpener, and dare I see, wasn't even shaped by a single burr hand crank sharpener, not to mention a double burr hand crank sharpener. This, friends, is a pencil that was sharpened by hand, enjoying the same tradition of excellence that our forefathers and foremothers enjoyed, going back to the mid-16th century, which was the birth of the modern pencil. And now once you've finished uh, with your pencil, you're going to put down your knife uh, and put the pencil in your non-dominant hand, and then put your uh, dominant hand closer to the edge, uh, the end of the pencil, and then simply destroy the pencil and throw it away because that was the first of hundreds of pencils you'll be sharpening and you're only going to get better at it. So don't look back, ever onward, that's our motto. So destroy your pencils now. Mechanical pencils are bullshit. <laughs>